Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. In this video we are going to create this cool augmented reality experience that is interactive, that uses different files like a USDZ file for the robot, object file that we are going to convert uh, into a USDZ file for the Earth, and all of that together with the new Reality Composer and Reality Kit. And if you don't want to miss any tutorials such as these in the future, make sure to subscribe right now. But now let's get started. So if we have a look at our uh, Reality Composer project in Xcode, and this is the project that I've created, then you can see that in Xcode we have the ability to just have a good look at what we have created and with this button in the top right corner I can actually open it up in Reality Composer. Um, I tried that. Um, and the problem was that it was really, really laggy and didn't work well on my machine. I don't know if it's related to beta or uh, if my 5K iMac uh, is too slow for that, um, but I decided to actually go with the iPad app that really works pretty well and smooth. And I just want to give you a quick tour of what we can do here in this app that works very similar uh, to the Mac app, but you do have the ability to actually have a look at your stuff in AR uh, directly from the device, uh, but not going to do that. So this is something, a preview that we can have uh, um, on iPad and I can uh, actually run my simulation here, tap start and just move around and have a look at everything. So this is really cool and this is obviously what we are going to create. And um, having a more detailed look at everything, you see that we have different components here. Uh, we have a very simple button here um, to tell us where we can actually start our project or our app. We could just tap on that later uh, with a welcome message that flies in. We have this nice little robot here, um, kind of a vintage toy um, that even moves. And we have our Earth that spins. And these different components are mostly from different re uh, from from different places so i got this um this robot as a usdz file from apple they have a quick look gallery um ar quick look gallery on developer.apple.com in the ar section there you will find an ar quick look section there are just a few uh 3d models in the usdz format that you have to work with when working with the reality composer um, but all in all, they look great and they have um, also some animations included, as you have seen with the robot. And I just went and went along and downloaded this robot right here, uh, even from my iPad. And we can use that right away. But as for the Earth, um, I didn't get that from Apple. So what I did uh, was looking online for a free 3D model of Earth. For Earth, it's quite simple. You just need a ball actually and apply a texture. So the texture is actually the more interesting thing here. Um, so this texture that we're going to apply and we're going to convert this object file, which is very common for 3D model objects. Um, and we're using this texture and we're converting that to a USDZ file that we can work with so if you have such an object file, um, it is very simple actually to convert that to a, a USDZ file. You could even include more material um, to actually also get depth effects and correct reflections and so on. But we're just going to use the color map here and keeping it very simple. So I've just opened up a terminal and indeed we're using a terminal here to, for the conversion and I'm changing my directory to desktop and earth. This is where my files are located. And now all I actually have to use is the Xcode run command. And I want to run the command USDZ converter. And I want to convert the earth object into earth.usdz. And my color map is also located here at earth underscore texture underscore cm dot tga. This is the file we have here. And once I hit return now, it just takes a few seconds and we have a ready to go USDZ file. And as you can see, we can even preview it here, move it around. And this is a file that you can send now to your iPad using AirDrop or whatever you like, and then we can use it in our project.
Um, so these are the robot and Earth, and then we have these two objects that are actually part of the library from Reality Composer that you can get when you hit the plus button in the top right area of our application. But now, uh, let me go back one step, this Reality Composer, and I can press the top right uh, plus icon to actually create a new project. And it is going to ask me what kind of an anchor I'd like to create. I'm going to choose horizontal since we want to place something on our table. And this is what our plain and simple project now looks like. I just want to show you a few quick things here so that we can um, have a more detailed look at my project and that we don't waste too much time here on creating all the uh, basic steps here. Uh, but let me show you uh, for example, when we press on one of these elements like this cube here on the right in this pane, you can adjust the material and with that also the reflection of this material, we can set it to aluminium, um, gold, steel and so on, um, just to have a special look if you like that can adjust the bevel radius, uh, we can set the physics and so on. Um, but let me show you how you can, for, for example, delete an object like this. So you press on it once, press again, hit delete, and we're good to go. Now, what we can also do is now add a new object. And as you can see in this library here, you get tons of interesting stuff um, for different purposes. Um, but sooner or later you will find that even the more generic elements like science and speech bubbles might not suffice so we can import things like our earth but let's do that a little bit differently let me just cancel that for a second and just use a sphere here as a very basic object we can move that around uh, with these little um, uh, cylinders that we can grab um, in different directions, X, um, Z, and Y. And as you can see, since I have turned on this magnet in the top left corner, um, my elements are actually snapping in position. And using one of these circles around my elements, I can scale these up. If I actually um, move my finger along one of these circles, I can change the angle, the rotation of these objects. But now, I actually just wanted to show you that once you have created such a basic shape, you can also replace it with another object and by that keep it at this position if you want that. So I'm going to now add uh, or import my earth um, that we have created earlier, just select it and there it is. Just scale it up a little bit, but it is positioned exactly where we wanted it to be. So this was the one thing that I wanted to show you. Now the second thing is, um, how do we actually add behavior to an object like this, like the spin um, that you've seen earlier? So I'm just selecting my object here and opening up the behavior section and then I can add a new behavior. And you get quite a bunch of elements here that we can work with. Um, but we are going to use a custom behavior. For example, you could use a tab and flip. This is something very simple, uh, wait and show, but we can also use custom here. And I can, for example, add a tab trigger. So once I tap on my earth, I want to do something like, for example, and this would be the action we're selecting now, a spin. And what we have to do here sometimes, if um, we didn't select it in the first place, we can choose an affected object. So we could also choose this little button here at the bottom, but we actually just want to choose our Earth. And then in a duration of, let's say, 15 seconds, we just want one rotation um, and we want to loop this using this little loop button here. And then as you can see, this is how we can actually run a spin animation. Now having seen how to actually create objects and basic behaviors, let's have a look at the finished RoboMan project that I've created. Um, you can see that it is basically um, the same thing just with a few more elements. And now the question is, how do we actually move our robot and how do we actually um, let our robot make one step after another? The cool thing in this case is once I open up the behavior area at the bottom, and if we have a look at these action sequences, that if I play 
um, one of these behaviors, which is a USDZ animation. You can see that this animation actually comes from Apple in this case, um, because it is integrated into um, this USDZ file. And you can just add an action sequence um, at the um, USDZ animation action, and that's actually it. And what I did now to actually move our robot forward is to combine this USDZ animation with another move and rotate element, or with a move and rotate action. As you can see, this would be the move action that I have to find, just moving our object along a certain path. Um, very simple, I could move that to the right, um, also move it to the top, whatever you like. You can move, rotate, scale it, and so on. And um, the app is going to create um, everything else for you. Uh, but now then I want to actually play my real animation here and this move animation together. All I have to do is just select that to start dragging it, move it on top of my other animation. And then I've created a group and once I run this, as you can see, we're actually moving forward and this looks pretty cool. Now I just added uh, a show animation here so that our uh, little robot comes out of the ground, it looks really cool. And at the end, um, what we're doing is actually um, introducing our welcome and tap to start button. Um, what we also have, this is the robo start behavior group. And there's something, the trigger um, that we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, but once we run this, as you can see, there's nothing happening um, because we have the hide at start behavior here, uh, which is triggered automatically when the scene starts and um, we're actually hiding all four objects that we have. As you can see, all of them are green and I can select and deselect all of these objects to actually make them conform to this um, action then uh, if we want them to. So this is the hide and start behavior. And then we have uh, start earth. All that happens here is once we tap on our button, we are actually hiding our uh, welcome text and the tap to start button using a hide action and um, grouped with a uh, another action is our earth that we have in this show action just to move our earth downwards our welcome and um, tap to start button are moving upwards and then we're just adding this spin animation so nothing really fancy here and now um, what I wanted to talk about is this specific trigger that we have for robo start which is actually a notification trigger if I just quickly create a new behavior here with a custom behavior and add a trigger then at the very bottom you can get a notification and this is a notification that you can send from Xcode just by calling the name that we have here, which is RoboStart. And we're going to have a look at that in a second as soon as we have this in our Xcode project. And for this, I'm just going to save my uh, RoboMan project here and send it over to my Mac using the files application or AirDrop. And back on my Mac, I have my RoboMan RC project file, the Reality Composer file. And you could use a Reality Composer to actually export a reality file, uh, which you can use together with AR Quick Look. But for augmented reality apps, and in our case, an app with a content technology reality kit, um, you need this RC project um, for this to work. We're going to call that Robo Swift, hit next and create that on our desktop. And I'm going to resize my window here a little bit. And what I'd like to do now is first of all, drag and drop my file into my project. Make sure that copy items if needed is selected and that we also add our file to our target Robo Swift. Hit finish and we are done. So. Um, there's also a demo experience right here. Also, when you're using the beta version at the moment, if you drag and drop something into your view and this is running, then Xcode crashes. So um, don't do this. I'm going to remove 
um, this file for now because we don't need it. And what Xcode does in the background, once you add such an RC project, here is ours. Um, it takes a, uh, just a few seconds to render and I can actually move around here and have a look at this beautiful screen. Um, yeah, what Xcode does in the background is actually translating the content of our file into classes and objects and structs, um, and basically a data structure that we can work with. And as you can see here, um, there was this experience file and we are loading or the template loads the box that is included here. And we're going to do something very similar. So I'm going to remove this template code right here and what I'd like to do is create a property for our robo anchor. So I'm going to define this variable here as a global property here. And this is going to be of type robo man and the robo adventure. This is the scene name that I've given to the scene that we were working with just in the top right corner. We can have a look at that just for a second. So that's the beauty of this thing here that we can open that in Xcode as well. Um, so here is our scene and with a click or a tap on this button in the top left corner, we can actually select our scene and here in the right corner in the settings for this scene, we can change the name to, for example, Robo Adventure. And I'm now interested in exactly that scene and that scene anchor. And I'm defining this as a property here because we're not only needing that in view.load. Um, in view.load, what we're going to do is use our anchor and fill it with the actual adventure. And we have to use a try statement here and we're living on the edge here, not catching any errors, not handling optionals, um, just using try exclamation mark to use Robo Man and then synchronously loading Robo Adventure. There's also an asynchronous operation that we could use, but for uh, simplicity's sake, we're now just going to use the load Robo Adventure function. And as you can see, this is all done by Xcode in the background just by dragging and dropping this Roboman RC project into our Xcode project. We get all of this for free. And now that we have this anchor, what we still have to do is using it and then generate collision shapes recursively. And we need this because we have this button that we can press. If we do not generate these collision shapes, button presses wouldn't work. So now the last thing that we do is using the AR view that is already an outlet in our view controller. So opening up our storyboard, we can have a look um, at the AR view that is just added by the template and seeing this um, storyboard here and a standard view controller is actually not very surprising even uh, with Swift UI um, as a new technology. Swift UI uh, should be seen as something that is or that is running parallel and you can adopt it step by step where it makes sense. Use a storyboard where it makes sense. Use Swift UI. In this case, uh, storyboards and view controllers make sense so we are using them and even template suggests us um, suggests that we should use that. Um, and if we wanted to integrate uh, something, some UI um, using Swift UI, we could do that. Uh, and also the other way around. But that's just as a side note. And we are having this AR view as an IB outlet right here. So using this AR view, access its scene and its anchors, we can append our new anchor, which is just our anchor. Maybe we should call it Robo Anchor. Let's do that. Just quickly refactor, rename, and call it Robo Anchor. All right, um, so this is our robo anchor. And now if we run this, uh, we would see nothing because our scene doesn't start. Uh, we still have to uh, actually start that scene. Therefore, let's quickly open our storyboard. Let's press Command Shift L, uh, add a button here and drag that to our uh, view controller. Let's say start experience and add quickly an auto resizing mask here um, to pin that to the top center. And once we did that, um, we can also open up view controller here and um, 
our main storyboard here on the other side. Let's create a quick action right here below view to load. I'm going to call that um, start experience. There we have our button action. And here we can now simply use our robo anchor access its notifications robo start. This is the notification that we've defined earlier. Let's just have a quick look at that. So here is my project opening it in the reality composer. And if we have a look at our behaviors, there is robo start in here as a trigger for our whole sequence here for our whole project, starting with the show animation of our robot and so on. We have triggered that with the identifier robo start. And we can now use our list of notifications that are available to us, which is just one, which is robo start and then just hit the post method. And once we did that, we can actually start our application. And I'm now going to run this on my iPad and show you the result. So, and here is our app. I can press the start experience button. We have our robot that walks. We get welcome, can press the tap to start button. We get our rotating earth. So isn't that cool? And that just with a few lines of code and the reality composer application, actually there's a lot to be improved here. Uh, we don't have very uh, great surface detection. The user can't really interact uh, with the whole scene. You should be able to move that around maybe, but that's not the point. You've seen how to actually create something really cool in Reality Composer and how to actually get what you have created into an Xcode project and put it into your application. So I hope you enjoyed this. If yes, then give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to not miss any new tutorials, especially now with all this great uh, new announcements from Apple. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.